Hi guys, Anthony here from The Hot End. In this episode, we're going to look at one of the best printers that I've ever used, the Zortrax M200. So, the Zortrax M200 is by no means a budget cheap Chinese printer. It is more aimed at the professional use but uh, obviously anyone can buy it and anyone can use it. Um, it is dead simple to use. The build dimensions are 200 by 200 by 180. It does 90 to 400 micron. It takes standard 1.75 mil filament and it will take pretty much any filament that exists as the nozzle can reach 375 degrees Celsius. Now, as I was saying, this is not a cheap printer. It's around the three and a half thousand dollar mark for, well, that's Australian, uh, US probably two and a half to three thousand dollars, somewhere in that range. But you get what you pay for. Um, out of every printer that I've ever reviewed, this is the very last one that I will ever give up because it always just works. I have been using it solidly for a year and I've never had an issue with the machine. So that's what you really need to expect from a machine of this caliber. So is it really worth $2,000, $3,000? That all depends on what you're using printing for. If you need repeatable results and you're pumping out a model uh, or multiple models on a daily basis and you just need the thing just to work don't even have to worry about it then most certainly this is for you obviously it's uh, out of range of a lot of people's budgets but for the people that can afford one or can justify the cost I believe it is most certainly worth every single cent you can see from the array of prints in front of me that the the print quality is just next to it is amazing next level amazing um, in fact, some of these prints actually turned out better than the resin prints. This one in particular, from Jeffro, actually turned out better on um, ABS, unsmoothed, than it actually did out of the resin uh, duplicated D7 printer. The printer itself uses a perforated bed, so you don't need to use any glue stick or glass or Kapton tape or any of the other methods to get your stuff to stick. And the first layer will print super hot so that that raft will uh, melt its way into the perforated bed and then you're not going to have any warping issues with this printer. Now I predominantly use this just for ABS because it is so reliable and just it just works every time. The only failures I've had were my own stupid fault where I say ran out of filament and as you can see from this model he's missing the top half of his head because I was being a bit risky and um, yeah, it ran out of filament. There is no filament alarm or alerts on this, um, which it would be a nice feature for this price bracket. The whole thing is steel, very heavy unit. The spool holder is on the back. The menu is nice and intuitive, simple to use. And I'm not even sure if you can hear it printing beside me, it is dead quiet. Well, not dead quiet, but it is super, super quiet machine. Uh, you could probably have this next to your bed printing at night and it wouldn't keep you up. Now this unit has the optional side panels attached. Um, they just clip in and I think that's an extra hundred dollars off memory, but they might even be included standard now, so I'm not sure on that one. But obviously if you're printing ABS, an enclosed enclosure or an enclosed space so that heat can build up and um, maintain a temperature is crucial. For a long time the Zortrax range was uh, hardware locked to using their own filaments. Well not hardware locked, software locked and it wouldn't let you adjust temperatures or anything like that. Uh, in about June this year, maybe a little bit earlier, they updated their software to allow external filaments. So that means you can now use this with any filament you like and adjust your temperatures accordingly in the software. The software I'll show you in a little bit, but it is uh, quite simple. There's not much really you need to do in there because it is designed just to work without having to stuff around with a thousand parameters to get nice prints out of the box, out of uh, the software out of the box, you just pretty much load a model and hit print. 
I have been lucky enough to be in the beta program for version 2.0, which is coming out very soon. And that also allows you some really cool new features like Simplify 3D. It allows you to do customized supports and place them wherever you want. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to show you that yet, um, but it is in beta stage, so it's not far off. I've mainly been using, like I said, ABS in this, and specifically Aurarum ABS. And I found that a nice temperature for the external ABS is about 255 Celsius with a bed of about 80. Now, some of the other features of the machine. Uh, it doesn't have auto leveling per se. Instead of calculating and adjusting your print on the fly, like uh, normal auto leveling would, this actually probes the bed in five locations. So it actually touches the nozzle onto some conductive paths on the bed and then will tell you which screws you need to tighten up or loosen off in order to get the actual bed perfectly level or as close as humanly possible. Now printing on a level surface to begin with, in my opinion, is much better than the printer compensating for an unlevel bed. In the ideal scenario, you always want to be printing on a properly leveled bed rather than relying on auto leveling systems. So the way that they've implemented this with the nozzle touching the bed to get it spot on is actually the ideal solution in my opinion. This is by far the most reliable printer I've ever used. Like I said, I've never had blockages, jams, it just works every time. And that's what you expect when you're paying top dollar for a premium printer. The print quality itself is just next level. Um, I haven't used a printer that can match the quality of this. You'll see on the hot end that instead of having a big bunch of cables that are going to wear out, it uses a ribbon system which will alleviate much of the, um, the tension and drag on the wires so they're not going to wear out anytime soon. And it uses a Bowden style tube or PTFE tube from the rear spool holder into the hot end. Now I'll go through some of the prints that I've done. Um, this one is a flexible bracelet. Again, oops. This one is a flexible bracelet and that's printed in ABS no finishing other than just taking it off the printer and that works clicks in exactly how it was designed so that's one of the other things I wanted to cover is as I was saying before the perforated bed means every single print prints with a raft but that's not an issue because this one is straight off the printer if you can see underneath, it's quite perforated and you can see that where the little nodules, nodules, with little knobs stick into the bed uh, and that's going to stop it warping. Now to take the raft off, I haven't done anything to this, it is just a matter of and the raft is removed. Now I'll try and give you a close up of this, but if you can see the base of that, you would probably never pick that that was printed on a raft. Nice and smooth and the quality is crazy nuts. So if you're a school or a commercial printer or if you really love 3D printing and have the money to spare I highly recommend the Zortrax M200 and I also have the M300 which is going to arrive any day. Now I believe the only difference with the M300 is a larger build volume but that also comes at a larger price tag. Is it worth the money? Without a doubt, yes. Reliability, repeatability, print quality and the actual build quality of the machine is just next level. We'll also go through some of the prints, eh? These are the scissors that printed. This is straight off the bed. And they work straight off the printer. And that's what you expect. You expect precision and you expect the re repeatability. The hot end ball of death, I broke the tip, which is my stupid fault. Or one of the kids knocked it over or something. Um, being ABS, this has been vapor smoothed which is why this one's nice and shiny. Einstein's been vapor smoothed. 
and so has the lion. Uh, the thing is straight off the printer. Bruce Lee, looking awesome. And I'll put links to the models in the description below. The only negatives that I'm going to go through now are pretty trivial, but they're still negatives. The spool holder on the back is 3D printed, which I don't like, and I think that should be steel or something for paying this amount of money. When you're printing uh, in an enclosed space, these panels tend to pop out of their little frames because it is only like an acrylic in a plastic frame and they tend to bow out a little bit sometimes and you just got to pop them back in. I would have liked to have seen glass or something else to fix that solution, but again, it's trivial. It doesn't affect the printing of the machine or its reliability. It's just a few little things that annoy me and niggle me and think, well, if you're paying this much for a machine, why can't they fix this and give me a steel spool holder? Why am I using a 3D printed spool holder? No big deal, but this is one of the cases that you get what you pay for. And without even needing to look at the start of prints anymore, it's probably getting me into bad habits because now I can just hit print and walk away without even watching it start because I just know it's going to work. That's not a good habit to get into, but with this machine, you can pretty much expect about a 99% success rate on your prints. So again, this isn't aimed at the total noob that doesn't have any money to spend. Um, Although beginners can pick this up and just use it, it is so simple to use. The ideal environment for this would be schools where they've got um, limited time. They need to just get things printing, just get things working and just get the job done. In business and in schools, this machine is probably the perfect machine. So without a doubt, this machine gets the hot end tick of approval and it is only the second or third machine to ever get that. The TiVo Little Monster and the CR10, which I don't think I've formally done the review of yet, and the Zortrax M200 are the only three printers that I can highly recommend that you buy. Now I don't get any commission off any of the sales of this or I don't have affiliate links or anything like that. This is a completely unbiased review. Um, they've not paid me in any way to say a positive review or no kickbacks, nothing. All they've given me is the printer to review and say, what do you think? So, big thumbs up from the hot end, big thumbs up from me. Anyway guys, I hope you found this informative. I try to be as unbiased as I can, but in this case you really do get what you pay for. If you can afford it, if you can stretch your budget and you want a machine that's so reliable you can just print and walk away, this is definitely for you. Anyway guys, I hope you like this review of the M200. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I can maybe even do a follow up or a part two when the uh, beta software is allowed to be shown. Patreon there is if you wish to support the channel as well as our affiliate links in the description for everything other than the Zortrax. Thanks guys so much for all of your support. We are nearly at 13,000 subscribers, which is just phenomenal. So thank you every single one of you for subscribing and liking our content. Please hit the thumbs up button. It lets me know that you like the videos. The next video from Zortrax will be the M300, which I believe is arriving tomorrow. All right guys, thanks. I'll see you on the next video.